Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beyond Extent podcast. How's everyone doing today? Um, today, we're back here with myself, Timothy, and on the other side, we have, to everyone's big surprise, William. Hey, William. <laughs> hello, hello, I'm the surprise guest. Oh, shit. For like, what is it, like 20, 26 episodes in a row now. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I, w I won't leave. I just keep, I just keep hanging around. Look, guys, I've been trying to get him out of here for so long, but he just keeps sticking <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. So, for this one, uh, you came up with the idea to just talk about cyberpunk, right? And yes. I was just so on board with it because um, it's also why we didn't want to do this 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 um, this episode straight after, like, when it came out, right? We wanted to yeah. give ourselves some time to actually properly play it and then just feel like a whole podcast episode talking about it because man it is such a good game it's yeah. so good i mean yeah it's that's the thing right uh there's been a lot of a lot of talking about it in the press and uh, everywhere online and um yeah i think first of all i agree it's a great game um but it's definitely i think you i wasn't disappointed because let's say the stuff that I was excited for that was all there but I think if you were like if you were looking for a little bit of a different game and more of like let's say a sandbox or something like that then I think you might actually be very disappointed and especially if you're playing it on consoles I, I haven't personally so I don't know about all that but I've um oh yeah, yeah I've definitely seen some stuff right so yeah. I'm I'm personally very happy with what the game is because it's kind of what i was looking for with it but mm -hmm. i understand that some people are very unhappy and um yeah i mean i guess that's what we're going to talk about yeah exactly and it's also good to give everyone like a spoiler warning because we probably might talk about uh, yeah. a lot of the stuff that's going to happen in the game anyway so if you haven't played the game yourself like honestly don't listen to this episode because yeah. it is definitely worth playing the game yourself and like going through all the stories yourself. Um, yeah, yeah I think I think it's I think it's um, it's the it's the best way to do it like this. Just because if we can actually talk about the some of the experiences we had and talk about them a little bit more in depth with the spoilers, I think it's gonna make it a lot clearer what we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe before that, we could do just like a little thing of, you know, of a spoilerless thing of who we kind of, who we recommend get the game and who doesn't. You know what I mean? I think that, oh, might, yeah, that would be that, a good idea. That might be what yeah. some people are kind of looking for. Yeah, because to go back to your point then, to, to it being like a sandbox game or like the expectations of it being a sandbox game, right? Yeah. Um, if you're if you're like you said if you're expecting like a true sandbox game you're not really gonna find that right because it is yeah. definitely more linear it's just like the the place where it's taking part is is more like an open world yeah so, so it's, it's it is go ahead yeah no it's it's definitely something that has a lot of different paths and and you can you can choose very much how you want to play and how you want to make decisions and that does have an effect on not only the main quest line but also your like relationship with people and stuff um but yes it's not like a gta where you can like for example the npcs on the street they won't react to you very realistically it's not like in um in something like a red dead redemption where you can go up to people and do like to antagonize and greet and stuff you know and kind of interact with them you kind of just mm -hmm. press f when there's a guy and then they say some random voice line yeah um which can definitely Which doesn't make, mean anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, hey there, or like yeah. kids. <laughs> all, every time, every time I, I I pressed F on a kid, they always said that one line, and it was, um, I I know you have some food, give it to me. And then I, I actually <laughs> dropped I dropped some food, and they didn't take it. And then I was like, you know, I mean, that's just you know, you're, yeah, you, you gotta take it when I give it to you, my man. <laughs> Maybe they don't want your food. Maybe. But yeah, it's it's so it's it's definitely not that, and also like you can't you can't do like, you know how in GTA you can put like a bus in the middle of the street, and then all the cars are gonna pile up, and you know like, and then the police comes in. It's it's a crazy thing that can happen. It's like 
it i would say there are like some pre-scripted things that go on in the open world but yeah. if you don't personally start things stuff won't happen just randomly right it it's it's not like it's not like um like an ecosystem of a world where like the, the all the people have like their own path and their own stuff it's it's just kind yeah. of npcs populating the world yeah it's there there are like a ton of cool things that that happen but yes. most of them in the open world have already happened so yeah, like yeah, if yeah. we're talking about like these these open world events right because uh this is not a spoiler by in by any means but yesterday i was driving past like a house that had like a large cargo drone like rammed into the side of it and like police were investigating but like it's nothing like the police isn't investigating for like an hour and then they drive on to the next thing and then they yeah, do something yeah. there like it's the police is just there they're investigating but that's it like nothing's gonna happen or something yeah like it's more about like uh the immediate story and just like a little what you call it like a little story bubble by itself instead of like a, a whole system that is that is like uh seamlessly reacting with like all yes. the other parts in the system yeah yeah exactly it's not it's not a, um, a systemic thing like it's not big systems that like you know, grip into each other to create like a, a world that's actually alive it's definitely more of a of a backdrop for the story right it's it's just kind of there to be a world that you can explore and that's and it works well but yeah everything mm -hmm. is is tailored yeah to happen exactly yeah yeah exactly because if i started thinking about that then it never really occurred to me that that was an issue to me personally. exactly yeah yeah so For it's me, like you not really either yeah, you, you see these stories and then you see these NPCs, like, uh, for the example that I brought up, like, you see them investigating and it's like, you have a look at the building and it's like, what the fuck, that's crazy. Like, how did that drone end up in that building? No. And then it's just like, well, I, I hope they figure it out and you just go on your path again. Mm. Um, and I, I think that's, that's also where you go into, like, the, the side quest, right? Like, because that's probably, like, a step up to just having mm. these, like, random encounters. Uh, there are like a lot of side quests in this game, um, yeah. but I never. Maybe this differs from from like person to person, but I was never that overwhelmed like I was in The Witcher. Or there is something, and I'm trying to figure this out. Like I was, I was more engrossed with the with the side quests that they offer in this game than they have in The Witcher. And yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like the the world itself is more. Uh, what is it? More encapsulating, more inviting, and like more. Um, I don't know what the right word is. I think encapsulating is good, or like more interesting to me than mm -hmm. The Witcher is. Definitely because yeah, for me as well. Yeah, because this is probably like the biggest thing that I like about this game. And that has me like thinking a lot about it is this is something completely new. Like this isn't something that goes back to medieval times and like take some inspiration there or this feels like something like completely different to what we're used to. Like this is like a full new world that you're exploring instead mm -hmm. of something that's that kind of... Well, it sort of does feel familiar, right? Because you you have the stereotypical things like cars and people are still there, but the rest of it is like all new, like these mega buildings, like fucking giant skyscrapers, and then you have the surrounding badlands that are just like empty wastes, just to give like a really nice contrast between those two elements. Yeah. And I've been I've been really enjoying the game so far when it comes to that, and just. Uh, the thing I keep hearing people say is that they love walking around in the game, just walking to their next objective, hmm. because there's so much to explore, right? And I find myself doing the same thing, where if if it's only like 500 meters away, I'll just walk there, like yeah, occasionally. Yeah. Definitely. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the disclaimer is like like we said, we both played it on PC, so. We can't talk about all the stuff that's going on on console, and from what I hear, it's probably best to like if you're gonna if the only way you're gonna play it is on PS4 or. Um, well, the thing is, one. you can't. 
Like they well, pulled not, it from the PS4 store. Yeah, but I mean, there's still there's still um, I think um, physical copies that you can buy. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I think yeah, just just wait. If that's your only option, just wait and get it on either the next gen consoles or just on the PC because I think yeah, yeah, it's it's just gonna hinder you from experiencing the actual game, right? And that the actual game is great, but with all the stuff that's going on around it, like the the graphic stuff, I think if you're if you're playing on a PS4 all the good might get lost in all the bugginess and um, bad performance yeah. and stuff. Definitely. And that's also pretty crazy, right? Just hearing that PlayStation pulled a game from their store. <sighs> yeah. That Man, is I, really bonkers. To, to be honest, I... Like, this is one of the games where I feel like it's from... Obviously, they started in, like, 2012, right? So they couldn't have known that it was going to take this long and all that stuff. And, but it it doesn't even make sense to release it on PS4 and, yep. and the old stuff because it's never going to it's never going to have its full potential and then i think so that's why on the one hand i'm like i guess people should have known that it's not going to be great on PS4 but on the other hand if if a publisher or a, a studio say hey we're going to release it on PS4 it is kind of there is kind of an expectation that it's going to run and actually work on that yeah. platform, right? So, it's I, I feel like it's definitely like you have to manage your expectations if you want to play a new game on like a a console that's seven years old. But then, mm -hmm. yeah, it's also on the on the developer to say, hey, maybe if it doesn't run at all, then maybe let's just not release it. On that. I yeah, don't know, but then you're missing out on a whole lot of people. It's yeah, I. Yeah, I totally agree with with like certain aspects, but then I started thinking about it more, right? Because like the first the first thing that you brought up is that people should know, but I think I don't think they can. Like imagine mm. if you're if you're not working in the games industry and yeah. you're just like a, a stereotypical consumer just buying like the next game on the shelf. It's like, okay, you expect that shit to work, right? True. Yeah, that that that's yeah, that's the thing exactly. If you I mean, there is there is definitely an expectation that when you buy a game, it will work and it will look at least, uh, you know, like <laughs> kind of good. Yeah. But yeah, to to come back to that point where uh, I think is it is it on the developers to make that choice? I don't think so, right? Because it's yeah. more about like upper management and about. Um, I think it's also the shareholders, right? Like a promise to the shareholders that you want to sell volume to make shareholders happy. Yeah. And then if if it doesn't pan out that you can do that because the game just run doesn't run anymore on like really outdated hardware by this point. We're talking about like hardware that's like seven years old, right? And then because it's pretty crazy if you just think about this. Like you wanna you wanna build a game that is setting like a new benchmark while also catering towards like seven year old hardware. That is crazy. It's never like there's gonna, it's never gonna work. Yeah, exactly. Like there's there's no way that that could have worked. Oh man. Yeah, because that's what makes it so painful, right? Like I can see their intentions and I can see that they that it's probably done to to like you said grab like the millions of people that still have a PS4 and haven't had a PS5 yet. But then maybe they were also expecting like the PS5 launch to be to have been way better and consoles to be um More readily available. available. Yeah. yeah. But then probably COVID happened and it's like you're you're on this train and you're just chugging along the tracks and there's there's no other option, right? No. I mean they probably I think I think we we have like a a kind of a, a condensed view of it because then the thing that always comes to mind is like just uh what is it like just extend the launch, right? Just delay it. But I don't think it's that easy. Because yeah, and I mean at, at some you, point, you know, there there was a point where if they delayed it once more, I think the the general consensus may have shifted you know yeah. I, I think every time they delayed the game some people were you know were were going to the other side and being like i'm not gonna buy this now or i'm gonna yeah you know i don't know 
I think what needed to happen is just like a longer extension. Like the first one that they did, just add like a couple of months to it. Yeah, and not and not like what was the last one like three weeks. Yeah, three weeks is not going to help anyone. Let's yeah, but then the thing is, who decides it, right? Maybe that is exactly like the shareholders <laughs> yep. that decide how long it's going to get delayed. So you don't really have, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it, because it like especially looking at the the online conversation about this, right? I mean, it's not the best way to to look at it. Uh, but it's it's always the same thing, right? Like, oh, this should have been delayed. Like, it should have been like easily delayed, like a couple of months. But then you're trying to i mean i'm making assumptions here as well right like and i'm in the games industry like we're both in the games industry but like we don't know we don't really know how it goes like in in those shareholder meetings or like in those meetings where upper management is like look do we like balancing all the factors of like should we delay the game and should should we push it like a fiscal year you don't you don't really know what the um what is it like the monetary situation is for a studio like that mm, yeah because they they've like if you look at the budgets for games right i was looking at some budgets recently and <clears throat> like for some games like the development budget is like the smaller side of a game budget like in in some it's cases like marketing. half yeah exactly like half of the budget goes to marketing or like even more than half like two-thirds of the budget goes to marketing for some games that's crazy and if you if you think about that and then you look at how long um cd project has been marketing this game then i don't know you have to you have to get it out the door at some point right yeah it's such a tricky conversation man yeah Definitely. So I guess I guess that kind of ends our uh, spoilerless territory, <laughs> and we want to move into some like our personal experiences now, right? Fuck yeah, man! Yeah, because like just to to end that section off, right? Like it's it's always important for us to to have a look at that aspect of it because we're we're game dev as well, and we're probably gonna be discussing more game dev stuff like in in this podcast at a later point too no yeah. but yeah it's it's interesting from, from our perspective just to look at all those factors and like what we think should have happened like just yeah. basically speculating right definitely um, yeah. i mean that's all we can do but if you if you look at the state of like the releases on ps4 that is not a game you want to release because it's also it, <sighs> just one last thing right like it's also destroying like the reputation from the studio itself yeah. where cd project red even though like the witcher 3 uh, i didn't play it on launch but apparently it had like lots of bugs as well but i i assume that this is way worse than the witcher 3 release uh, like it's, I, yeah, I, yeah i would think it's so. not even playable on uh on ps4 for most people no so yeah anyway Let's do like you said. Let's go into like the our first uh, impressions of it. You go ahead, man. Like, what what was it like? Just just booting the game up and like playing it for the first time. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I originally I had a I, I taken a day off um, for a tattoo appointment, um, but then it it didn't work out because of a, a second uh, lockdown in uh, Germany. So mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna move that um, that day off to one week later, and uh, just have a cyberpunk day, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. So when I booted the game up, um, it was uh, it, it it definitely felt like the so so what I was looking for, I guess I, I should I should clarify that was a world that I can explore and kind of immerse myself in. Mm -hmm. and a great story that i can i can explore and um you know just kind of get down and and and, and, and find out the secrets and all that stuff and have you know just have a have a good interesting intriguing story that i can uh, experience mm -hmm. and um i think from the right from the start it was kind of what i expected it to be like it was definitely a, a, a really cool world. I, I started as a corpo, by the way. I don't know. Oh yeah, I was just uh, about to ask. 
Yeah. I I saw that as a nomad, probably like the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that sounds like a cool start as well. But um, so yeah, it was definitely like it felt like I, I, what what's really important to me in games like these is like the world building. And yeah. um, I definitely got right from the start. I got a feeling that there was a lot of cool world building going on, and interesting stuff with these corpses and like how how the world has developed and how it's um, you know it's how how it works. And um, so I was really impressed with that. I felt really good about that. I played uh, probably all of like that Friday. I literally played the whole day, and then <laughs> until five in the morning. I I spent like. I don't know, 15 hours straight in the game. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I haven't had that in a game for ages. Yep. I haven't had a game where where for the first time I play it and it like it, it sucks me in, right? I think maybe the last time that happened to me was Skyrim. I was like, yep. how old would I have been? I think I think it must have been the same for me, like Skyrim or Fallout 4. Like those are probably the two games where I was like just really engrossed in it. Yeah, I, I I still remember. I think I, I must have been like 13 years old, right, when Skyrim came out. It's oh, crazy. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I um I got it on Christmas, and then the next morning at like 6 a.m. it was downloaded, and I, you know, I woke up and put my blanket around me and started Skyrim and explored the first dungeons, and I just played it for the whole day, and it was be the best. Oh, and, man. Yeah, so and good. that's yeah, that's kind of how I felt with Cyberpunk. It's um, And then later on, I... I definitely started like focusing on the side quests more because I felt like, uh, first of all, I didn't want to rush through the main storyline, and also I wanted to like that was the most interesting part uh, of the whole game for me. And man, some of the side quests are so good. Oh man, it's so good. So when when you started the game as a corporal, like where do you start? Do you start in like the middle of a city in like one of the one of the corps? Yeah, e exactly. You start in um, in like a big office building, right? And um, there's like a, there's some some intrigue and stuff going on inside of the company, so they kind of want to um, like there's like I actually I I don't fully remember the whole thing anymore, but from what <laughs> I remember there's like um, I think there's a guy who wants you to like find some shit on uh, on another woman that works in the same company to like blackmail her or something, like there's yeah, something yeah. like that going on, right? Um, and then, um, you, uh, you, you get into all that stuff and in the end, some, some corpo agents just like find you and they strip you away from, uh, from all your like privileges and you just pretty much get fired and they take all the, uh, all your money, I think. I think they do take all your money, but yeah. And, and like all that stuff. So, so you're, you're, you're like getting fired and, they kind of just throw you out into the world, right? Because um, mm -hmm. you, because because you were involved in that whole thing. Um, uh, yeah, that was like the that was like I guess how you start as a corporal. How does it work for a nomad? Yeah, it's it's probably like the the entire opposite end of the spectrum. Like you start yeah. in like a garage where you're looking yourself in in the mirror, and you're there with like your uh your car that needs like a fix up because something broke in like a, a small shitty garage in the middle of fucking nowhere mm. and then you're just talking with like the the mechanic fixing your car and then like a sheriff like comes in mm -hmm. um and he's just wondering like what the hell's happening and why you're here and he basically just tells you to to fuck off because he doesn't trust outsiders right and as a as a nomad, you recently like the first thing you do when looking in the mirror is rip off your clan tag from the backers. That's how it's mm. called, like the the clan that you're from. Um, but it's it's not like you're seeing them or like you don't really have interaction with them. Like the first thing you do is just like rip off the tag, and then okay. you get into your car. Like you establish. Uh, a connection with a contact that you have inside of the city. Because you're currently, um, like, your first thing you do is, like, you have to smuggle something inside of the city. Mm, okay. Um, so it's it's pretty interesting, right? Like, the directly pulling you into the game and, like, directly being engaged with it. But I think 
um uh, this this start is really interesting because it sets you up for that contrast in the beginning like you as a nomad you start out in the wastelands and in the beginning i was a bit unimpressed by how it looked because mm. Like the, the thing about cyberpunk is it's not about the wastelands most of the time. It's more about the city that you're in and like the really dense nature of that city. Yeah. So I started out in like a wasteland and just cruising around in your car and I was feeling like, okay, like it wasn't really impressing me just yet, right? But um, I was definitely interested. And then um, you do like the the first the first little mission where I ran into my first bug where there's like two guys in the in the street and like I think I think they need to be on like each, each other's shoulders or something but like the guy on top was just floating in the middle of the street while the other guy was just walking off <laughs> wow so it's like okay uh I don't know what's happening here and then I drove past them and then I must have hit someone or something and then I got instantly killed by by the sheriff <laughs> 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 so that was like my introduction to the game i was like uh okay uh i'm not doing that again yeah but then after after that little hiccup right um that's when you go into um let's see you meet up with um jackie um do you know him already the, or is it like is it a new friend that you make no, so he's basically he's he's basically the person that you're smuggling the stuff for. Like he's ah. he's um he's also how would you call it? Like he's a fellow merc and he's yeah. just there with the goods and you're smuggling the goods in the city together with him. So because in, in the get, corpo thing, you're just mm -hmm. like already friends with him. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you just you like go to a bar and you meet him and you drink with him and that's where the um the corporal guys kind of surprise you so it's yeah. it's very interesting because yeah it's um it it was cool to have that like you know like a like an old friend i guess but it also meant that you didn't see all of that character uh, progression right so you were just kind of told hey he's your friend yeah yeah i think i think i have that i have those kind of moments like a lot in cyberpunk though where yeah. you don't have that initial character building like for example um like further further down in, in the game right like if you're doing like a lot of side quests or if you go into like new parts of the city where like a fixer first contacts you mm -hmm. like it always felt a little bit weird to me like it always felt like i should have met you through a storyline bit first before oh uh, they just called you on the phone and say hey I'm this person, I live here, if you want to work, come to me, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's like, wait, like, what, what happened here? Like, where, where did you get my number or something? Like, there wasn't really that response, or for some of them, I can't remember, like, um, there are some fixers where they contact you, but it feels like they you've already had a conversation before this, but I oh. guess... I'm guessing like it's it's like a main storyline thing, but I was so focused on like just exploring the world and like doing side quests that there must have been like a little bit of a hiccup. Where normally, yeah. if you follow the storyline, at some point you meet somebody's fixers, right? You go to their place and you have like the initial meet, and that's where you kind of set that whole thing up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I was. <clears throat> I think it's not a real bad thing, right? Because it's like, it's a small thing. And then once you do like the, the main quest, that's when it makes sense again. But yeah. I think it's just a testament of like how good the side quests were. Oh man, dude, there's even like some short ones that that really made me like think and stuff. And then there was a couple ones that are, I don't know that that were like they they literally blew my mind. I I guess I'm, I'm just gonna give some examples of really good side mm -hmm. quests in my opinion. Um, first of all, there was one really short one um, that was just I don't know if you've had that one yet. It was because um, I think I, I've played a little bit more than you. I don't want to spoil stuff for you now. But, <laughs> um, no, go ahead, man. Yeah. So so outside of your apartment, there's just like a couple of police officers. And yeah, they talk I've done about, that quest. you know, yes, yeah. And they talk about like one of their colleagues who lives right under you. 
God and, damn, um, and that was such a good quest, dude. Yeah, and um, and they just talk about him and him like being depressed and not not doing so well, and he doesn't want to talk to anyone. So you uh, you get the quest to talk to him, but at first he he won't open the door. So you come a little bit later, and then you talk to him about stuff, and he's just you know he's he talks about how. You know he has all these feelings, and uh, he's not f like he's like the, the the other policemen are like, you know they have that old like stereotype of being like, oh you're just gonna man up, right? So yeah, he feels like he's not being heard and um, all that stuff. And so then you talk to talk to the the police officers and tell them, hey, this guy's not doing so hot. You know, just give him a break. Maybe you know listen to what he's got to say and don't just be like, hey, fucking pussy. You know, man up. And um, I don't know how it ended for you. I don't know if it can end a different way. And that's one of the things that made me think about that quest. But I yeah. came I came back a couple of days later and wanted to talk to him. Because then the quest said, yeah, you know, you can talk to him a couple hours later. And I came up to his door and there was yellow tape on his door. Yep. And police out of the thing. And he had killed himself. Yeah. And that was... And the like, dude was crying as well, right? Because he was yes. just like... Oh fuck! Yeah. I should I should have been like easier on him. Like I should have listened to him, and it's just like fuck, man. Like, yeah, and that that made me like, because obviously, I mean, suicide is is a very like, it's a very it's super sad. It's a very prevalent thing in our society. I, I think what I heard is that with COVID, also suicide went up. Yeah, and um, first of all, it's I mean, it's it's definitely brave or. I don't know if it's brave, but it's 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 ambitious to tackle something like that in a video game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that that was pretty harsh. And then you know, it it made me feel like could I have talked to him earlier? Could I have done something yeah. different? And that's I mean, it's such a stupid thing to say, but I mean that that made me that made me feel bad, right? Yeah, it made me feel like fuck this poor guy, and I just went. I, you know, I went away and shot a bunch of fucking uh, 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 maelstroms over in the other <laughs> part of the city. And what I should Just have been doing, thing. yeah, and I should have been what I should have been doing this whole time. What I was fucking wreaking havoc on the city. I should have just gone to this guy and talked to him, and maybe he wouldn't be dead, right? And and that's yeah. like that's really cool. I haven't really had that in in a lot of other games where this made me like definitely morally question some stuff, and it was it was yeah. interesting. I think what it really does is that it makes it makes the the city that you live in like it makes it feel alive, right? Like it's not it's not always about like the big stories that are happening, like oh this heist is happening or like this police chase is happening. Like there's also like smaller stories, and those smaller stories they really help you just like being embedded in the world. Because like with that same quest, right? I I remember standing there. And you have the two cops standing outside, right? And they're sulking and they're kind of kind of like discussing stuff between them two. Yes. And I was just like, shit, should I, should I do something about this? Like, should I pull out my gun and just like waste him? Like I was, I was weighing out all my options, right? Wow. And it's just like, like that, just that emotion, just like that, that feeling that you have. Like, it's not, it's not that you have that in any other game. Like it was yeah. such a, and if you look at that quest, like the the quest setup itself, it's not it's not big, right? Like it's no. just it's it's fairly small, it's self contained, but still, like that quest gave me the feeling from like I'm living in like an empty shell of an apartment, and like all the people here are just like NPCs, to like no, my neighbor just died, like yeah. my neighbor just committed suicide, and that was real. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, and that's why the, it would have been it would have been great if like all the other NPCs that just walk around would you know you would be able to interact with them in a way because that's the thing. It it definitely feels the the world feels alive, but only as long as you've got quests to do. I feel like you know what I mean. Like yeah. in other in other games, you can then just you know go to the barber and go play tennis like in GTA or something, and yeah. um, and the whole world is like in a little ecosystem where like stuff is going on. But I f that's the thing. In Cyberpunk, all the quests are great, but I feel like outside of the quests, there might not be as much to do and to see as in other games, maybe. Mm -hmm. Did you? How long did you stay and talk, try to talk to the cops afterwards? 
I don't know. I don't. I think. I, I think there wasn't a lot I could say. I don't know. Yeah, because that's the thing. You can't really say anything to them. Yeah. But I, I was hoping that I could, like yeah. even even just talking to them and being like, "Fuck, I'm really sorry, guys. Like, uh, I'm sorry this has happened. Like something like that, something mundane." Yeah. But I stayed so long that they reverted back to their normal NPC behavior, and if I got close to them, they would attack me. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. That that kind of breaks so, the immersion again, right? Yeah, exactly. So that kind of broke it for me when it comes to that, right? But it's also because I was I was so impressed by by the setup and like the system for that small little quest that I was like, okay, like I can probably say something, right? Just to put a nod on it yeah. and then just uh, go away. But no, they reverted back to the normal NPC behavior. So I was like, ah, oh, shit, that kind of sucks. Mm. I almost got killed by them too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I mean, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just keep going with some other side quests that really impressed mm -hmm. me. Um, have you done any jobs for what's what's their name? I think Elizabeth and Jefferson Perales. Oh, I'm doing that one currently. Oh man, I really want to talk about it. It's so great, but I don't <laughs> want to spoil it because it's it's actually it's actually one of the things that that like I don't want to spoil because I felt that side quest was so great. Well, I'm I'm currently at the stage where I just talked to the detective in like the the restaurant, right? Where you meet oh, up first. Oh, the guy with the eye, River. Yeah, exactly. And then you you go to like two locations. So we went to the first location, but then I got called up by someone else who needed my help like really urgently. Mm -hmm. So I had to I had to run off. Right. And the the call that I went to was from from Pan Am. Yes. Yeah. Um. This is this is also the the first thing that I noticed yesterday when I was playing it. I was I was doing that quest that we were just talking about, and then I in the beginning of that day I was looking at my clock. It was like nine in the morning or something. So I went on that quest. I got called up by Judy, and she was like, "Look, um, we're good to go. We have everyone here. Meet us. Meet us tonight for pizza." I oh like, yeah yeah oh, yeah. Okay okay. I'll need to go there tonight. So. Um, I skip time for for like one of the rides, and it's probably the first time that I've done so because like in in the longest ride with that cop, nothing was getting said, and I felt like it yeah, was still yeah, yeah. like a long ride, so I just skipped it, and it skipped to like nine p.m. and I was like, oh shit, I need to go and eat pizza with like Judy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was I was thinking about that. So I was doing that quest just like really quickly. I was trying to just get it done. And you basically talk to this guy who tries to run away, and then he gets uh, captured by that detective. You interrogate him for a bit, and then yeah. you're off on your own way, right? So I summon my car, I go to Judy, and then in the middle of me, like almost being at Judy, like Pan Am calls me. Mm. And she's like, look, I need you right now. Like, yeah. I, we got an emergency. Like, um, I, I need you here. And I'm like, fuck, what do I do? Yeah, and that's that's the first moment where I was thinking about it in a way where, um, shit, is this like say if I go to Judy, like is Pan Am gonna die? Like what's gonna happen? Because you have no idea. Yeah, but in the end, you could just go eat pizza, and then the next day you can drive that's, over, and she'll be fine. That's what I did. Yeah. And you even get the option to um, sleep on Judy's couch, right? Yes, yeah. And I was like, ah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do it. I should go to Pan Am just straight away and just help her out. But then I was yeah. just curious, right? Like if it would break down or... But, I mean, it's good that nothing happened, but it was also unfortunate. Like say if you, if you sleep on that couch... And you skip time for like twelve hours, and then something really terrible happened to Pan Am. Yeah, it would be so. On on the one hand, it would be great, right? Because it would make it would first of all, it would mean that multiple playthroughs would be more interesting and all that stuff, and it yeah. would mean that you have to make decisions like that. But then, for someone who wants to experience the whole story, then yeah. it will it will suck, right? Because then they they can't go back. Exactly, and I think I think that's also where they 
they made this compromise, right? Because I'm pretty sure that at some point they were talking about like something happening to Pan Am or like to one of the characters that you're playing with. But yeah, or, or like, something like if you don't go, you know, to eat pizza and that stuff, then you know, you won't be there to maybe uh, help with the plan. So the plan they come up with uh, is not as good, you know, and then or something like that, you know, that could be interesting. Yeah. yeah. If they, they just do the stuff without you. But, yeah, because um, you, you, you get know. the option in like the conversation to just say like, okay, this is all good, but just do it without me. Like that is an option in like the dialogue. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, hmm, can I? Because it's also like Johnny's there, right? And he's just saying like, oh, um, what does he say? Like it's lines or something like, oh, you're getting distracted by like a bunch of whores trying to do a takeover or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, fuck Fucking you, Johnny. man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man. but, yeah, but yeah, that paralysis uh, questline. So um, uh, after yeah. that first thing with the with the mayor, right? Mm -hmm. That's when they they call you again for another job, and that's the really really good one. Oh man! Yeah. Okay. That that okay, so, so that. that that questline actually scared me. It made me feel really eerie and weird. And I oh, was like, that's interesting. it's, it was great. And then, uh, but, but then as a contrast, the quest after, have you met Ozob? Uh, no, but that's in my quest log. I think I had like oh. the initial conversation with him. Uh, but have you met him yet? Have you seen how he looks? No, no. Okay. Then I won't, I won't spoil it. Cause, um, <laughs> because that quest made me laugh. Oh god. So it's like so that's the thing, right? It's like you have a quest that makes you scared and then the next one you go to might make you laugh. So it's yeah. that's it, it it's definitely really really great like that there's a lot of different side quests. Some of them mm -hmm. feel very like they have a lot of weight and they feel like you're doing something and then there's some that are, you know, just like funny little things that can happen and yeah. That yeah, that, yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, I was driving through the city yesterday and I think I was like in the what is it like the Finnish beach area? I don't know how that district is called. Um, Pacifica, that, that I, where they they tried to make something nice and then it kind of got run down and now it's just like gangland. I don't know if it's Pacifica yet. I think it might be on the border. I'm not sure to be honest. Um, but it is definitely that direction though. Um, but sometimes like when uh when it's getting late and i'm just like okay i need to go to sleep but i just want to do one more quest i'll pick like the closest question mark that's to me and i'll just sure. do that little quest and um it's like a house and you you get a call that um like one of the fixers lost contact with the person that's inside of the house so it's just like okay one of these quests right like it's just like a stereotypical thing so I open the door, like no one's there on like the ground floor, no one's there on like the upper floor. But when I'm scavenging through like the ground floor, like uh, I hear someone like whispering about like, oh, like really jittery, like, oh, there's needles in my head. Like, oh, what am I going to do? Like I hear oh, I, someone I haven't done like, this question. I hear someone like going through the basement and I'm not going to spoil too much then, but it's just, I had that same feeling of like, oh shit, like what the hell is waiting for me down down in the basement yeah yeah um yeah that's that's one moment where i felt like because it was bright like it was in the middle of the day it wasn't even night but still like just you being isolated in the house and just knowing what could be waiting for you like such a creepy feeling man yeah they they, they definitely nailed some of those side quests and but there's one thing that, that that does kind of irk me about that. I think that's kind of what you were um what you were hinting at at the start is that there's a lot of side quests around the world and it, you usually get a call for side quests and gigs and stuff from your fixers. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it just it like you get the call when you're like walking around the place, right? Like they just always know where you are, it feels like. So a lot of the time it happened to me where I was looking at a house and I was like, I, w I, I kind of felt like, okay, there's an entrance there and an entrance there. So it feels like this is a gameplay space, right? This is not just set dressing. Something oh, is going to okay, go yeah. down here. And then like five seconds later, I get a call and it's like, hey, you know, there's something, someone in there and you need to steal it. Is that you need to kill him or you need to steal this or you need to do that, right? So 
it sometimes felt very gamey in yeah. that I walk past something and it then it tells me, hey, there's something going on instead of, you know, me maybe being on the other side of the of the um, city and then them telling me, hey, can you go over there? I just got a call. Can you do this for me? Right? Yeah. Or even if you just do the job, then, I mean, it might break a little bit of the narrative, like the, the setup of it. Yeah. See, that's where you get into compromises again, right? Because some, like now that you mention it, it would be nice to just do like an, an area like that and then just do the quest and then call them up and saying like, look, I did the quest. Like I got this, got this item for you. Like there was some psycho in the house or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, then you don't get that initial setup. And usually yeah. what I do with these, with these side gigs, like I, I do read most of them, like mm -hmm. just, just for like the, 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 the bits of information. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a compromise again, I think. Right. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Because like now it never occurred to me, but now that you said it, it does feel like a trigger. Like it's, oh, you hit the trigger in volume. That's that's just uh, when the when the quest line kicks in. Yeah, I, I, that's the thing. I think there's literally not a way to finish a gig or like stumble over a quest without getting the quest, right? Yeah. So sometimes you you go somewhere in I don't know Skyrim and you kill a bunch of people and you find like a legendary weapon, and then after and then you know you realize oh I think this might have been part of a quest line, right? But in Cyberpunk, if you enter that area of that quest. They're just going to call you up and say, hey, you know, at that exact place where you are right now, there's something going on. Why don't you take care of it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you did you do the quest at some of the... There's one mega building that you go to uh, constantly. What, which one is it? H8. I think so, Eight, yeah. yeah. By did the way, you... there's something I, 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 I found on the map uh, with, that really confused me. H10 is the mega building you live in, right? Mm-hmm. So there's the 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 point right next to where where uh, like your your apartment door that is H10 atrium, and then north of it, like a kilometer north on the map, there's another mega building, and the fast travel point right in front of it says H10. So huh. I think they might have, maybe I I, yeah I think they might have did an oopsie, and <laughs> named it the wrong. Mega building, but yeah, but the one that where you, you go that. with Judy, right? The one where Clouds is, that's H8. Yeah, 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 where Clouds is, exactly. Did you <laughs> did you do the, the little quest with the vending machine outside? No, not yet. I heard about it, um, <laughs> but I haven't done it yet. It's like a sentient vending machine, right? Oh, God, it's so good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually haven't done that yet. But it's such that's, a funny storyline because... Yeah, go ahead. That, that 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 just like even though i have played i think like 45 hours now and you've played like 35 we both have quests that the other person hasn't done yet and stuff so that definitely yeah. makes me hopeful that there is like a lot more content than maybe i i, I might have seen yet right so well this is this is a thing with the game that i constantly keep stumbling on is that you you go from quest to quest and you take like a bunch of streets and most of them are like familiar to me yeah um Especially in like the city center, right? Because that's where a lot of quests are happening. But then there are moments when I'm just like, um, I took a wrong turn and I'm like, hey, wait, I don't think I've been in this area yet. Mm. And then it's just like, what? This is crazy. Like I've been driving for like, like you said, like 35 hours around in this area. And then there's still areas that I haven't been to. Yeah. And I think that's also why like exploring on foot is so interesting because I think if you only drive by car, you lose a lot of the the environment because a lot of it is just like the windy paths going up to like certain sections, then coming down and like winding up into this street and then like the little alleyway that's a shortcut for this one. Like there's so much uh, density and detail in in like the the city itself that's the thing that that always that always that also makes me maybe scared before it launched and that's why i was really cautious with my hype because i honestly i didn't think they could pull it off like it was just like imagine 
imagine doing like an open world game where uh, some of them are already like really tight on budget when it comes to just like rendering an open world like that just on like a, a horizontal plane but then they add like the the third dimension on top of it no. obviously you you have way more occlusion with like the, the bigger buildings and all that stuff right but still like i yeah, there's honest, so much stuff going on i i honestly didn't think that they could pull off like the density that they're that they're pulling off and that's probably also the the thing that surprised me in the beginning because i was doing like a lot of stuff on foot like really taking it in that's when you see alleyways that aren't dressed up where i'm like okay they didn't have time for this mm. but it's only because the rest of it is so well dressed up and like so detailed that well, the, the that stuff that stands out yeah exactly that the stuff that is normally not noticeable in most games like really noticed like it's really noticeable now because there's not really that much going on yeah like the 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 the, uh, the level of polish is so high on the rest of the world that when it's not it really stands out yeah exactly yeah i, I guess i guess that takes me to another thing right like let's let's talk I, I think we've talked a lot about how how we'd like the game and i think we both agree that it's it's kind of what we were looking for from that game because yeah. we came in with the right expectations but yeah i think there's also like there's still some stuff that that i was disappointed with um and for me there there's i guess there's two main things um first one is um performance it, it doesn't run as well as i would hope it would like for example when i'm in like Japantown or something and i drive in my car in third person i get down to like 30 fps and stuff which i didn't yeah. i, I hope like i could get like a, a nice 60 all the time and i already you know pulled pulled my stuff down to like medium low settings and stuff so mm -hmm. um yeah but uh so that that was a little bit disappointing i hoped it would run better but i mean that's just what it is it's a new game and all that stuff and my pc is a couple years old now um <laughs> So yeah, that's, yeah, that's just I'm, what it is. I think I'm running at right, right, um, 45 frames a second. Like most cases, like occasionally where it's like really dense, it drops down to like 35 or something like that, right? Um, but yeah, I'm I'm also running like a what is it, 1080 Ti non RTX. Like we we both don't have access to ray tracing, right? Because we're still running like an older GPU. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. I I think in yeah. uh, you know maybe next year sometime I'll upgrade my PC and then I'll play it again. And um, I think it will it will definitely be really nice to explore that world again with yeah. you know maybe like I I usually turn down the graphics a little bit to get more FPS because I have like a 244 hertz monitor right so it's nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, I maybe for that game I might be like okay, 60 FPS is enough, but I'm gonna pump it up all the way uh, and have like all the nice the nice little details because like for example the characters and the skin and stuff looks great but oh, i can't God, really yeah. i can't really look at it with subsurface gathering and high texture detail if i don't want to have my game be you know very very slow in other parts yeah um, so, like yeah. that's that's where i i make a sacrifice where i'm not really that keen on like getting 60 fps right yeah. Uh, I'm just like, look, I just want to enjoy this world. Like, it's if I miss a shot every now and then and again because like the frame rate is not up to par, like, that's all right. Like, I can live with that stuff, especially for a game like this where I just want to, I just want to see the world and like completely be engrossed in it. And for that, for me especially, because I'm like a graphics junkie when it comes to that, probably it's like I want to see it in like all its all its splendor yeah and that's also yeah, I'm why a, I'm, a, I'm a bit the other way around yeah uh i think that's also why this is probably the first time where i'm actually really thinking about like getting an rtx card because yeah, before that thing. it was it, it was it was also like uh, like what's what's the point at this time right like it would be nice to to do some stuff in Unreal Engine and have like access to ray tracing and not have to worry about like global illumination and like baking mm -hmm. that down and all that stuff. But this this game is like the real first time where I'm just actually thinking about like, okay, like RTX, 
it's just looks fucking sick like i need to i need to get a new card <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's the thing for me as well I've, I've never thought about getting getting like a huge crazy card like that but yeah maybe maybe um but yeah frame rate frame rate is one of them right um what was another point you wanted to bring up yeah the other one is interactability with the open world outside of quests right i've kind of touched on this before yeah, but yeah. I feel like as long as you do quests, you've always got some great stuff to do and it feel, the world feels alive. But then when you just walk around and look at the world, you can look at it, but there's not a lot of stuff you can do with it. So, you know, there was in one of the trailers, there was like um, uh, a, a, like a little clip of um, V eating some, what was it, like takoyaki or something. Um, and, you know, you could actually like see them eat and stuff like that. And yep. um, you would like drink shots with an animation and stuff, and you you often drink shots and stuff with an animation in quests. Quest. Yeah, yeah. But outside of it, when you go up to a bartender and you press, "Hey, what do you got for me?" It literally just opens up a context menu of like, "This is your items. This is their items, and you can trade with them." And yeah. that's that's kind of disappointing um, for. Uh, for me, because I would have loved to just be able to go somewhere and then sit down and eat, and or like go to a barber shop, go to a tattoo shop, go to, you know, I don't know, go to play uh, pool in a bar, right? Mm -hmm. You can't really do that. You can, I don't know, you can look at the people, and or also a bug that happened to me a couple of times is when I'm inside a club, there's no music, and it's the weirdest thing. Because <laughs> all the NPCs are dancing, and there's no music, and it's so weird. Yeah. And it happened to me, like, five times. Yeah, I, that's that's the thing that I keep stumbling on as well, is that, like, a lot of audio bugs. Like, when I'm when I'm putting stuff down in a trunk, like, no audio, and then an NPC pops stuff down in a trunk, and, like, there's full audio, and it's like, huh? That's so weird. Um, I had... I. I don't think I've had the club bug where there's no music, but I do remember like certain aspects where I'm like, look, I was expecting some noise or like when someone's driving away in a car, like no noise. It's like, what? Yeah. What's happening here? Or like I've had moments where like uh, you do a gig, you put, you put the guy in a trunk or whatever and the car drives away. And then as soon as it hits the road, it's just like, poof, just gone. It's like, no oh, man, come on. <laughs> Yeah, but I I totally agree on on the uh, what is it like? How would you call it? Like the interactability with the open world, because there were moments when I'm like um, sitting in a bar with Pan Am and then just drinking beers, and I'm like, this is this is pretty sweet. Like this is pretty cool. I, I wish I could do that in like other times where I could just be like, um, I don't know, just call someone up. Or like go yeah. to go to Judy or whatever, and then I don't know, order pizza or like whatever. Like yeah. something. It doesn't have to be like a whole elaborate thing, right? But just like some normal conversations for character building. Yeah, that that would have been really really nice to see. I mean, I understand why they couldn't do it, just because you know it doesn't. A lot of that stuff doesn't add to the actual gameplay part of it, but it would add to the whole world building and feeling of it. Like yeah. The only, kind of like the only places that you can interact with are gameplay related, right? You can go to a Ripper dock and get um, uh, like a, a fucking rocket launcher implanted in your arm. But <laughs> yeah, and, and also like when you get that, that eye implant at the start from Victor, you know, yep. there's like an animation where he goes up to your eye with all these machines and he's poking around. But when you go to a Ripper dock later on, it's it's just you click on it and it's just plop you've got it installed and yeah i get what i did that because in you know in games like red dead redemption 2 a lot of people complained about how slow it is and how you know when you go to a barber let's say they like actually cut your hair or when you take the saddle off of your horse you have to put it on and you have to take the gun out of your saddle and stuff but yeah. what while like some people might be annoyed by it because it slows down the actual gameplay in games like that i feel like that's it's part of the whole thing so it would have been cool to go to a ripper dock and then the guy actually goes up and takes a machine and like opens up your leg and puts the double jump thing in it right instead of mm -hmm. just you being like boop i've got enough money and then you, you plop it on well even even with simple animations like you said right like 
instead of the Ripper dog going up to your eye, like say if they would put you under for like the, yeah, the yeah. thing and it would just be like, okay, let me just put you under it. Like he, he hooks you up to a machine. You just go into like blackout mode for just a little bit. And then at the end of it, like you, you maybe get up, but they play like the drunk animation or whatever that you're still like waking up from like the anesthesia or whatever. Yeah. And then maybe you, like, you, you know, you like look at your arm to see how fucking different your arm looks now that it's got yeah. a rocket launcher in it or stuff like that. That would be really nice. Oh, but that's also what they do in the beginning with the Ripper dog, right? Where do you have like your first hand implant? Where you yeah. go from like a normal hand to like, oh, there's like actual metal on it right now. Exactly. Like, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, if that would have been, yeah, that's the thing. That's, I mean, that's kind of what we're saying the whole time, right? Is inside of quests, it's got everything you want, but outside of them, there's some stuff missing. Yeah. There, there were even moments where I got fucking pissed when I couldn't finish my food. <laughs> uh... I don't know. I don't know which moment it was, but um, there's, there's like a, a quest line that I'm doing now, and I still need to go to the parade. I'm assuming that you've already done that part. Yeah, yeah I, I finished the, I finished the, the game. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm getting up to that part where we need to go to the parade right now with, uh, I think it's Takemura, right? Yeah. With, uh... Oh, dude, I love him. Oh, it's so good. But we're, we're like eating, we're like eating these. Um... Yeah, you, I think that's what, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was uh, talking about, the, like the balls on the stick. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we're eating that and he's just like explaining like a bunch of stuff, like yapping on and yapping on and I'm just eating like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I did the same. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> you just like yapping on and you're just like, you have all these dialogue options and then just eat at the bottom. And I'm just like, hmm, just eating. Especially because he tells, <laughs> like he, he like smells it and then he, he sh like he shoves it away from him because he doesn't want to eat it. And I thought it was so funny yeah. that you can then just go and like eat the whole thing in front of him and be like, you know, you fucking, I know you're, you know, you're like a high guy, high society guy. You want to eat the good fucking, you know, Japanese fruit you from Tokyo. Yeah, but this is but my that's life. All, exactly. <laughs> that's all we got here, man. I, I need to fucking eat this shit. Yeah, I was literally thinking the same thing. Like, I was like, when was the last time I actually ate in this game? Like, yeah, it's been yeah. a while. So I'm, I'm going to enjoy this food, man. Just leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> and I love, I love when he steps away and he's just like, what does he say? Like, it's just sawdust in glass or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I don't know if you had that too, but at some point he, um, <laughs> it was like, oh, um, he, uh, he an texts old you. people Facebook. Yeah. It was like an old people <laughs> Facebook Reddit post where he goes like, um, oh. uh, like, uh, it's like a nigiri night city. Good. Uh, good Japanese food. Uh, uh, kabuki or something like that. And he, and he, and then you can tell him like, Hey dude, you know you might not be finding anything because you're you're texting this to me. You're not googling it, dude. And then, <laughs> uh, and then he like asks you for a recommendation on on some good Japanese food. It's that was really funny. I like that. Oh, I loved it. And I I pointed him to Tom's diner, and he was like, "Well, I I can't go there anymore." Oh, really? Like, well, they have the best pancakes. And he was like, "Oh, well." <laughs> I told him about some great. Uh, I think I don't know what I think. I, I think I told them about it, like a great ramen place or something. Oh, but that's see that's interesting. But that's probably because you went there. Yeah, maybe that's because I didn't idea. have the option. I oh, only really? had the option for Tom's Diner. Oh, really? That is cool. That is so yeah, right? cool. Yeah, I had a different. <laughs> I had a different option for like an actual good Japanese place or something like that. I don't know if it was ramen maybe. or sushi or something. Maybe it depends on your starting position. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Obviously, because you are a nomad, right? You're, you're not yeah. from there. You don't know any restaurants. I'm but just I, like, oh, I'm Tom's Diner is around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I probably had some business dinners at that place, right? Because I was a corporal. That's cool, though. Yeah. I was, I was actually thinking, like, when I sent him off to Tom's Diner, he was, like, all grumpy about it. I was like, what if you... Like for role playing sake, right? Like, what if you actually went to places, and you're like, "Hmm, I could recommend this place to him," and it gives you like an entire list of the places that you actually went to? Yeah, yeah, that would have been nice. Or I don't know if it does happen. Maybe because like later on, I saved, um, I saved like a little restaurant from being robbed. So maybe, yeah, if you haven't done that quest yet. You could recommend but, that place or something. Oh man, that was so on the nose. The um the the thing with the um, the restaurant, and Come I, on, I man. actually I I didn't I also didn't really 
I that was one of the few quests where I felt like the options weren't there for what I wanted to do. What because what I wanted to do is is tell these guys, you know, you're fucking with the wrong guy, just leave or I'm going to shoot you in the face. But I couldn't do that because I was I guess we should talk about that too, right? My build was very uh I was I was just using pistols the whole time and I was God damn um, it. We used the same build. <laughs> <laughs> So I did. I went for uh, reflex, technical ability, yep. and uh, yep. intelligence. Oh, I, I skipped on intelligence. <laughs> oh yeah, but I had like no points in body. But to intimidate the guy in the in the restaurant, you need body. So even though I was like oh. the the best, you know, the best uh, shooter in the West, you know, that type of thing, yeah. I couldn't. Um, I couldn't <laughs> tell the guy to fuck off because I wasn't strong enough. So I had I to like pay did him have to body. go away. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that's that's like my third skill. So I have body, like it's it's not much, but like occasionally, like I put a point in that. So I actually told him to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. I, I then, paid him, and then I wanted to shoot him, but then they they just despawned, right? Or yeah. no, they did. They no, that was actually kind of cool. They didn't despawn. I went out of the restaurant, and then they were across the street. There was like a gang, and I think one of them. It, it might have been a coincidence that it was the same NPC. Uh, skin you know but there was mm -hmm. one of them that looked like the guy who robbed the place uh, uh, between them so then i i went over there and shut up the whole gang but i didn't get the money back that i paid oh, man. you know like that that would have been so cool to to then go up to him and like hey you think you're the big fucking man robbing a little restaurant and then you just shoot his yeah. friends and then you take the money back that would have been great yeah that would have been that would have been awesome yeah it's that's the thing right like the the quests and like the side gigs, like we we keep mentioning, like they set you up for for like big expectations, and then there are mm. certain moments where you're just like, hmm, I wish they did this just to deliver like that extra ten percent, like at the end. Yeah, I guess that's the thing, right? Some of the side quests are so expansive and so great that then you feel like all of them must be like that, and there is definitely some side quests that are just like a little, you know, like a little thing. Yeah, and, uh, I mean that's that's I don't... okay. But yeah, I don't think they need to be expansive because then you're going to get into like the, the realm of like The Witcher 3, right? Where like all the side quests were so, well, most of them were so expansive that it's just like, oh my God, I don't want to do them because it's just like, it's such a time thing, at least for me. But like yeah, but I think a lot of Witcher side quests also like, there was, I, I felt like there was the quest in themselves weren't filler but inside the quest there was like a lot of filler just because you move around so much slower and then you like you know you have to yeah, like yeah. find stuff and then it's like oh yeah find this werewolf in the in the woods you know and then you just spend yeah. like 20 yeah. minutes walking around in the woods until you find like one little thing yeah and that you you have much less of that in cyberpunk i feel like like it's mm -hmm. it's, it's much more densely packed the actual quests yeah yeah but I, I do agree with that point. I just, just like going back to like the the second point, right? Just for like role playing purposes and just having that little, a little bit more in depth interaction with the world around you, where there were moments where I was actually just like, okay, I'm winding down for the day. I'll just go and eat and then go to my apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but then it's like you go and eat, which is basically just dragging stuff into your inventory and then just pressing pressing a button on it it's like oh okay i kind of said it tells you hey you have the nutrition bonus now but it's like yeah, yeah. but i want to see my guy eat something and then you know maybe sit down in my apartment and like smoke a cigarette and look out the window you know like something like that like yeah. something that my v yeah. would do right is maybe come home from a hard day of shooting people go into the <laughs> go into the thing get like a bottle of whiskey out drink a couple glasses while looking out the window at the at night city Smoke a cigarette, yeah. go to bed, right? That, that'd be great. Yeah, 100%. That's that's also like, man, it, yeah, it is It is so expansive to set all that stuff up, right? Like expensive yeah. and expansive and it's just like how deep do you go into that stuff? But like I had the exact same feeling when I went home and just like, okay, like it's time to wind down, like take a shower and like just take a shower i watched some tv as well and then i was expecting like to do the same thing as you like grab a drink or something and then i flicked through all the channels and it's all just fucking advertising and it's just like fuck you i'm not doing this 
And then there's some like interesting news uh, broadcasts. Oh yeah, definitely. Like occasionally, definitely. but then even even in between like the news broadcasts, they have fucking ads. Like, what is this? But, Come on. But, I mean, but I I like that because that tells you something about the world, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's the the thing. Like, yeah. I I hate it because it's ads, right? Yeah. But then I also get it because it's like the perversion of the future where everything yeah. is just commoditized, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's. I think you need that. Like even sitting down at the TV and then just flicking through the channels just to realize that it's nonstop ads is just like, yeah, this is this world. Like yeah. that's that's 100% this world. Like even if you go to the elevator and you take the elevator up, like there's fucking ads. Yeah, like, yeah everywhere. Yeah, just fucking everywhere, man. Also, how does V sleep? <laughs> yeah, he does have a weird sleeping <laughs> position, doesn't he? <laughs> It's like, I'm just going to lie down on my bed, not make use of the pillows, and then just <laughs> wake up in this position. Yeah, I mean, I I did that in Spain when it was, like, super hot. Maybe it's super hot in his apartment. Maybe his AC's broken. Oh, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> it's just, like, you really gotta, sweaty. you got to roleplay yourself a little bit, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, also, oh. stuff like, that's, the, like, the thing that we were talking about, like, um... Uh, interaction with the open world and like stuff that you know like i like just having animations in the world that can happen like eating right so like that for example you can go take a shower in your apartment but he doesn't take his clothes off yeah yeah exactly that was so weird to me yeah and that's yeah that's just like i don't know like why oh dude <laughs> i uh i had this moment like I think I think it was like it's still early in the game. So I was doing like a bunch of quests and then I I did what I normally do, right? Like at the at the at the end of like a bunch of quests before I go to sleep, I'll drive up to my apartment, park my car, go up into to the apartment and just like check out my apartment just a little bit. Mm. So I go into the mirror and the mirror flicks on and I realize that I don't have any pants on. So I'm just going out there, like, uh, I'm playing as a female, right? So I'm, like, fully fully naked, like, bottom down. And I'm just standing there in the mirror, like, what the fuck have I been doing, like, the last couple of hours? Like, I've oh, been man. doing quests naked from the bottom down. Like, why didn't why didn't no one say anything? <laughs> yeah, right. Because it's Night City, baby. Everything's yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah, everyone's yeah, just I'm, like, oh, oh you're, you're here for the job? Okay, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but dude that's so that's another thing right the clothes system i it took so long for me to find something that looks cool and has a good armor stat oh man now i have it dude i i dude i am exactly what i wanted to be you know i like the, the idea in my head was kind of that usually i would call it fixer but it, you know in, in cyberpunk there is already fixers but what i mean yeah. by fixer is something someone like um mike in breaking bad right like someone yeah, that just yeah, yeah. goes gets the job done you know and is all fucking badass and cool about it right mm -hmm. goes in maybe sneaks around in my case hacking a little bit but then you know if if push comes to shove he can definitely handle handle a little a little pistol and mm -hmm. um and now i'm actually walking around with um aviator sunglasses a little um what, what would you call that in english i don't even know like just google it um so i have a trench coat on that looks so fucking badass like a really nice turtleneck thing cool jeans and like some cool shoes so you know yeah. I, I i finally found something that looks really really nice but um it's it took me so long and i like at some point i think the best stats i would have had would have been with like booty shorts a tank top and like a um you know one of those <laughs> chinese uh, those woven hats yeah, those yeah. like war. I think the yeah, straw those, hats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, flat, flat, <laughs> flat cap is what it's called. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that, so that that works really well together now. But it's yeah. At the start, it's just every little thing you find is like better than what you already have on, and sometimes yeah. it's literally just like a skirt. And I mean, in my case, I'm a guy, so it, it does look weird when I walk around in a skirt. For, I mean, no, 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 I'm not judging anyone. It's just for me personally. It when I try to be that kind of badass person, I I, I don't. Yeah, that's not how I pictured. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
this is this is like the perfect opportunity to to role play as any person you want to be, right? Yeah. And I think in our cases, I think it's just going to be like the uh what is it like stereotypical female and and male characters in a game. But I yeah, I agree, man. Like the even the upgrade system is kind of weird because then if you find like clothes that you really like, then it's like okay, now I need to constantly keep them upgraded if I want to have like the the highest armor. But then I don't want to spend any crafting components on that. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm a little bit disappointed with the crafting. I put like I think that's my primary skill is technical ability, which allows yeah. you to do crafting and stuff. But crafting is unbelievably expensive compared to other games right like yeah. I, I at some point stopped selling all my guns and just disassembling them yeah. uh, when i don't need them so and then just putting all of it in into like a, a big gun but yeah I, I, I do have one gun that i have like from the start it's uh inside lizzie's bar there's a gun that's called lizzie and it's oh, like this, okay. this it's like this pink little tech pistol and now mm -hmm. it's I upgraded it from like two hundred to like seven hundred DPS, and yeah. um, and it's got it's really cool actually because it's um, so it's a tech weapon that can shoot through walls, and when you upgrade it, it shoots like four shots in a row. It's like pew 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 pew, but mm -hmm. the so the, the the recoil goes crazy. So what I would do is I would aim at their legs through the wall, and then I would you know <laughs> it would shoot up. But now I've got a I've got a mod on the gun that makes it so there is literally no recoil, no recoil. at all. Yeah. So I can aim at their heads and then I shoot four shots right into their head like consecutively through the wall. That's pretty oh, neat. Oh damn man. Yeah. And I upgraded that pistol a lot. But then, yeah, like for example, sometimes you find like, for example, that trench coat I have is a legendary trench coat, and it's the only thing I've been wearing because I put like a hundred extra armor in it with like a, a mod. Mm -hmm. but that's so that's so crazy because that mod wasn't that expensive but it was like a hundred armor but to get five armor upgrade on on that legendary trench coat i yeah. would need like legendary crafting components epic crafting components and they're so expensive so it's it's so weird like it, it always feel it almost feels like the crafting is like it, it doesn't do anything compared to just adding a mod that gives you more armor or more movement speed or something yeah yeah that's a good point yeah, I haven't I haven't been crafting any armor. Like I put like a component in here like every occasionally, but like when it when it comes to like upgrading it, it's just like no, I I rather spend my components on my weapons. Where um yeah. I have like a, a three pistols, like one for every occasion basically. Like I have yeah. I also have like a, a tech pistol too where it can it can see through walls and it shoots like in a hexagon pattern. So like if I shoot one round, it has it's not eight rounds that you see, but it's like five rounds in like a circular pattern. It's, it's pretty actually sweet. I think the, the the pistol that I have also shoots four shots, um, like yeah. that in like a square. But dude, there's I got this hand cannon, and I'm so I'm so in love with that weapon. Even though it's like the lowest DPS from all of my weapons, just the bang that it makes, man. <laughs> I'm just yeah, so I in love a, with that yeah. gun. Yeah, I know what you mean. I sometimes like I, I play on hard. I don't know what what yep. um, difficulty you played on. Yeah, yeah, me and too. At the start, it is definitely hard. Like you can get killed pretty quickly, which I like. You know, I like to suffer. I I, I play Tarkov a lot, so you know, I'm I'm, I'm used to dying. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I I mean, I'm now at the point where if I do a quest that I got a couple, you know, a little bit ago. And then I do it now. I I just one shot headshot everyone with my lowest DPS weapon, just because I'm like so high level. And it, I yeah. that's the thing. I so. I, I think I think I, there's something wrong with the damage scaling in that game because I heard a lot of people complaining about it that you can have like percentages on your weapon, percentages on your skill tree, and that they're multiplicative, yeah. so that. At some point, you get to such a high damage that you one-shot everything, even if you're playing on hard. I'm definitely not at that stage yet myself, because I'm roughly around like a 300 to 400 DPS right now on my weapons. Yeah, but that's the thing. Most of my weapons have that too. Uh, most of my oh, okay. weapons have 350 DPS, but then I have like two weapons that are like 600 and 
like 500 dps and then yeah but they also they feel like they don't even have that dps they just feel like they want everybody yeah 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 because i still i still need to shoot like a, a couple of bullets in someone's head to to put them down in most cases yeah. right like where with some of the verdicts like when it's the last bullet in the chamber then it does like double damage that right that kills everyone instantly well almost yeah. but that, but that's wow. the thing so uh, that's that's why in its core it's definitely still a role playing game right yeah and i i like the role playing aspects of having a cool world and having a story where you can have make decisions and stuff i'm personally not a huge fan of the um of the the whole role playing in combat thing like i'd rather have an enemy just die to one shot and if they don't die to one shot then it's because i can see that they have armor on right but for example in, oh like that yeah yeah, yeah but, but now it's like I, I i did literally two gigs in a row one of them i had just gotten and it told me it was danger level high or or very high and then there was one gig that i had like from the start of the game but i didn't do it ever right and that was it literally said like no no danger level at all so i went to that one and i killed everyone <laughs> with one shot and it was no problem and then i went to the other one and i couldn't like i had to sneak because the the people just took so many bullets there were little bullet sponges and it was just normal people without armor on it's just another gang but it seems like because i got that quest later in the game the enemies are like level 30 and the other enemies oh, were like scaled, level 5 yeah, yeah so and that's the thing it, it it does kind of sometimes as as like a player i you know i played counter strike tarkov all those games where you know one shot to the head you're dead pretty much yeah so it's yeah it, that that does definitely feel weird to me i guess if you're used to playing i think like stuff like destiny also has it where you just need like 200 bullets to kill someone right like a boss or something but yeah yeah, yeah or like i don't know like the you know the manager from clouds oh <laughs> The fuck, yeah. man. Fuck. Have you have have you had uh, yeah the fight? <laughs> yeah, I I had a uh, I had a couple of fights. Like that was probably like one of my biggest frustrations. Like I had two big frustrations when playing this game, and that was one of them. Because like I'm worth shit. Like when it comes to like boxing, so I instantly died there the first time. Like he one shot at me, so I was like, okay um i'll have to try something else but then the save actually happens when you're in the room with him and he's already like pointing a gun at you oh oh yeah i didn't i, I actually didn't wasn't talking about that at all i actually i st uh, stuck in there so i could just talk to him calmly i didn't have a confrontation with him there oh he uh, do, do you well did you i, kill I him in that did you kill him in that yeah part oh interesting because yes so so for me <laughs> That's super. That's actually really I, cool because for me, I he tried was still talking alive. to him. Yeah. yeah, but he won't let you because you probably killed his guards, right? No, no, no. I up until that point, I hadn't killed anyone. So I, I sneak into his room, and like I tried to have a conversation, but my uh, it's probably because my intelligence is so low, and I made the wrong decisions in that conversation. Ah. That it's just like ah, I've had enough of your bullshit, and he just pulls a gun on me. Interesting. Yeah, because for me, I just walked out there, and it was all good. Maybe also I had like a corpo thing that I could say. Maybe that was it, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, but later on in the game, it's you find <laughs> out how what, what what how much of an asshole he is. And you, yeah. you know, you get the chance. Have you met Maiko? Yeah, right? Yeah, uh, you must yeah, have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So Maiko tells you like, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell him to go downstairs. He'll be there alone, you know? And she gives you like a wink and like, you can, you can kill this guy. So mm -hmm. you go down there and you confront him and he's, being a complete asshole and you fight him and then he he's actually a boss right so he has like his own yep. uh health bar and that's like he's just a fucking he's just some fucking guy in a suit why <laughs> does he have a health bar if i shoot him in the head he's dead but yeah that's that's i guess that's just what like that's, rpgs are right just, yeah exactly that's where the role playing comes in right yeah and like that that doesn't really bother me that much it's just yeah, it's it, Man. It, it's yeah, it, it's okay with me too. It's it does feel weird if you're used to like you know yeah. I I say like a realistic damage model, more realistic, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like what you would expect with with a with a guy taking a bullet to the face. Yeah. Did you um? Did you try um? 
the beat on the brat quest line where you need to do the boxing. Wait, wait. Let's let's talk about that quest line first before oh, we dive into okay. that yeah, one. Sure, sure, sure. Um, because how how did you resolve it? Like, did you sneak through all uh, through all the guards and got past all of them, and then picked up uh, like a bunch of items in the room surrounding his room? Because I, what I noticed, because I died like ten times, I think, in that fight. Like, it was fucking ridiculous to get him down. Yeah. Um. What I what I notice is that you find like a lot of stuff. Like Evelyn's purse is in the room next to him, mm. and there's like a whole bunch of stuff that I feel afterwards, when I was already engaged in fighting with him, like could have helped me in the actual conversation. Yeah, maybe. and I was just like, I was just like, ah, oh, shit, that kind of sucks because now I need to fight him, and like even if 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 you engage with a fight with him, he never leaves his room, or like barely ah. does it. Ah. So it's kind of it's kind of glitchy the way that he's handled because you're normally expected to just have a punch battle with him mm. in his room, but like he he would beat the shit out of me, no question. <laughs> so I had to do that like a couple of times, and then I started sneaking around in all the other rooms, and I actually had to grab a bunch of guns and katanas to like finally get him. Like it took me like an hour and a half or or something like that like it was it was ridiculously hard and it yeah, was up me, until was... yeah go, go ahead, ahead. <laughs> uh yeah I, I for me it was like no big deal I, it was literally i i walked around in the club and then i found like some door and then i walked in it and nobody saw me and then i just went up like um i think it was like a cargo elevator or something i i, I think that was the that quest that i'm thinking about yeah so yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm like, like in the back of the club, and there is no one around, and uh, I just snuck up and I just walked in into his thing and say, "Hey, man, what's what's going on?" <laughs> and then I did we just the talked. And then yeah, I, I did the exact same thing, and then I tried to like uh, a role play a little bit where I'm just like trying to intimidate him, but it didn't work. Oh. And he was just like, uh, "I'm not dealing with your bullshit," and he just pulled out a gun. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's, but I, I do like that aspect of the game, that thing of talking to someone else and then seeing how they resolved it and that it can definitely yeah. be different. I like that. Because I, with every quest that I was doing, I was imagining like, what if I made this decision here? Yeah. But then yeah, I, like to, to keep it all intact, I'm, I'm never a person that like, or like doesn't try to like reload saves to just see what happened with this, with this thing. Like if... Especially with this game, I'm really excited to do like a next playthrough. Yes. And then picking like a completely different character. Like the next thing I'm thinking is like uh, a really stealthy corpo person with like blades or something. Mm -hmm. Just to really see that other side of, of things and then like make different choices and see how they infect, affect like the entire storyline. Yeah, I think... Um, so, for example, like I said, I, I definitely started at some point going very much for intelligence and like, because um, I, what I usually do is I start sneaking and then uh, hack hack some people and then I go in and shoot the last couple of guys and, yeah. uh, you know, blow their, blow them apart with my arm rocket launcher thing and stuff like that. And it's, and it's awesome and it feels great. But yeah, I think um, I want to go, like you said, completely other direction. I want to play as female V. I want to see if that makes any difference. Um, and I wanted probably, I'm probably going to do something like street kid, um, or nomad, but probably street kid. And then just, uh, put a lot of the points in body and then go for someone that who just beats people up, you know? Oh, that would be cool. Like a pure melee build. Yeah, exactly. Maybe with a katana or a, or a baseball bat or something like that. Right. Just, yeah. you know, they've all, they've got like smart weapons and you just go up and hit them in the face with a monkey wrench. Like that could be, <laughs> that could be really cool. Uh, yeah, that would be interesting because that's also like, if you start out the game <clears throat> and you go to your apartment, there's like people sparring against a robot, right? So, yes. So, so that was what I was going to say. Yeah. Go ahead. Have you, have you done that quest line? No, I haven't done it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because so it's. I, I, I did not have any chance because, like I said, I didn't put any points in body, right? Mm -hmm. I think I put enough points so I can, like, in one quest, I could do something with it. So I, I think I have six points in it, but on all the other stuff, I have, like, I think I have 15 technical, 12 reflex, 11 intelligence, and then 
uh, like eight cool. So body is like my least uh, leveled one. Yeah, yeah. So I, the fights, I I can't. I, I, there is no way I could beat them. There is literally <laughs> not any way. I tried, you know, I tried at the start, and then I tried in. Um, like a little bit later and I tried like way later and even though I leveled all my other stuff and I was like high level, there was no way I could beat him and I, I really liked that, right? Because it felt like, yeah, you can you can do a lot of stuff but you're not a, you're not a fist fighter, right? That, that yeah. made sense to me. And then I, I still don't know if I like this or not but then I just went to the Ripper Dock and got Gorilla Hands and yeah. I went there and I, I three, like I, I killed... The fucking guy, or not killed, but I, I I defeated the the guys in like three hits each, right? And then definitely some later on parts of that quest, I it, it was like I would say it would be a fair fight, right? Like it, it felt like it was balanced mm-hmm. uh, with me having the gorilla hands and then the other person just having like a ton of health. Um, and but they would still one hit me, <laughs> like they you it, it like the whole quest felt really strange. It felt kind of unbalanced because first of all. I don't know if you're supposed to use Gorilla Hands or if you're just supposed to have like a lot of points in body, but yeah, yeah. that felt kind of like cheating. But also on the other hand, pretty much all of the opponents you're fighting are also cheating. Like they all have some kind of implant or some kind of thing that's helping them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then a lot of the time, I don't know, that's that's why I'm kind of reluctant to play a melee build, but maybe it's it's different when you play melee versus people with guns because... I it, all I did is just stun lock people, right? I just hit them with a strong attack, and while they're recovering from that, I hit them with another. So they never yeah. can attack me because literally, if I was hit once by, it's just dead. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just dead. So it's so that was so weird. Like I had to hit them like four times, and with one hit, I was dead. So I had I would just dodge around them, hit them with the with the heavy attack, and while they're recovering, hit them with another, so they, they're pretty much just stun-locked the whole time. And then when they attack, just dodge away. Mm-hmm. It, it, it didn't... I don't know. It, it felt like I was cheating, but I didn't know how to how else to beat it. So, yeah, maybe maybe you're just not supposed to beat it if you're not, you know, going for that kind of build. But I don't know. That, that was a little bit of a thing, because I did end up beating the whole quest line, even though, you know, I didn't... I, I wasn't a fist fighter at all. Mm-hmm. So, talking about that kind of stuff, like, how does intelligence weigh in? Like, what um, what kind of hacks are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all the hacks, brother. So, <laughs> what I usually do is, if there's, if there's like, a, a lot of enemies in an area, I go in and I first um, do a breach protocol, which mm-hmm. means I, I do, like, a couple of, you know, the hacking minigame, yep. and I turn off all the cameras for a couple of minutes, and I get um, all my stuff costs less RAM. I've yep. got a really, I've got like a legendary cyber deck thing now that has like, I think like ten base RAM, and then you get another six on top. So I have a lot of oh, RAM shit. now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then I go up to, um, uh, then I, you know, I see what's up. I maybe I ping the enemy, so I see all of them where they are. I go, I, I, I go to the remote camera and just you know go through the cameras, look where everyone is, mm-hmm. and then sometimes I'll do something like I've got two very um like expensive hacks one is suicide where they just shoot themselves and it's always a one hit and um the other one is cyber psycho which where they they like you you kind of overcharge their implant and they go crazy and they just shoot everyone around them oh okay Um, yeah so those are nice then you can do i mean one thing i guess that intelligence is able to do for me is I, i think i make a lot of money from it just because every little port that you can jack in around the world. Like, you know how you have these red little things that you can, you know, go up, jack in, and then you do the mini game and you get money? Yeah, I barely do those, though. Yeah, I do those every time now because they're super easy for me to do because, like, I have, like, almost, it feels like I have unlimited um, tries or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, I, I just, like, I, just from that, I make, like, 3,000 eddies each little side quest because there's like three of those ports and i do them all and then i get a thousand each or something yeah that's pretty good yeah yeah i was just interested in how varied the skills were because i'm also doing like uh <clears throat> like the breach protocol is definitely one of your standard things right and then camera yeah. control and then i make uh cameras friendly but that's also a thing you 
you have access to probably yeah. the yeah. only things that i don't have access to are like the suicide and like the the cyber psycho yeah i i mean i also have stuff like um i don't know there's like uh, or what's i think sign synapse overload or synapse I don't even yeah, know how yeah. to say that. Yeah, I, I can do that one too. Yeah, but that's that was that used to be like my top end, right? Like that used to be like I have six RAM and this costs six RAM. I can only do that once. Yeah. And now I can do a cyber psycho or a suicide and then they die and I get like instantly get a lot of RAM back and then I can do another one. You know, like I can do a lot more in a lot shorter time frame. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's all so, about like the, the the recharging of your RAM and like how to effectively kind of use it all. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. But but um, yeah, so that, that 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 definitely felt really cool. And now I can, you know, if there's like a, a turret, I can I can uh, turn it friendly, and then it just shoots all the people around it, all all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for me, I I don't know if I could play it as only hacker. I guess you could right and just like never shoot anyone and just go completely for hacking stuff but yeah for me it's like yeah it's like that cool like i said i have like an image in my head of who i wanted to be right so yeah i go in there and i've got like you know the gun in one hand and my well it doesn't really matter it doesn't really make sense but my 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 cyber <laughs> deck in the other you know and i can do like fucking you know i'm like i'm like gandalf i've got the wand and the one and the sword in the other hand and i can do this and <laughs> 2077 gandalf cyber gandalf but like yeah that, that's that's what also makes it interesting right like just being able to just role play that role because that's also what i was imagining like i'm the outsider i don't have i don't have any implants i'm not corrupted by technology and then you go into a city that is just basically it's all technology like that's the whole thing about that city and then you slowly get corrupted over time yeah. By just like the first the like the um what is it, like the Kiroshi eye implant and then like the mm -hmm. hand implant and it's just like slowly but surely like uh adapting to it. But I'm I'm role playing it as like I'm still I'm still trying to cling in cling on to like my heritage and just being like out there in the wastes with like pistols in hand and not really being too uh too intelligent about stuff. Like I, I found myself often like sneaking through locations because that's a thing you should do in games. But then oftentimes I'm like, look, this is not who I am. And I just stand up and I pull out my gun and I just start blasting people. And then yeah, you I think hear, that's important. Yeah. yeah, and then sometimes you hear like people on the other end, like in your walkie talkie, like, you were supposed to go in quiet. What are you doing? And just like, well, this is not who I am. Bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You hired the wrong person if you wanted quiet yeah that's the thing and for me it was yeah like i was the corporal right he was thrown out of the, the the corporation but he has all the inside knowledge and he and he he kind of i don't know if he wants revenge but he wants you know he wants to expose the corpse and yeah. do stuff like that but then you know sometimes there's some stuff where you might start getting sucked in back into that world right and it's so but yeah but it was like very I think it's very important to support the narrative of the game with the, with an with another one in your head, like yeah, like you said, if you you could min max everything right and just sneak everything or do this and that, but I think you shouldn't make the perfect decision of the all the time. You should, if you like, I I do reload stuff when I like I don't know when I when I wanted, when I like desperately wanted to sneak something to try something out, right? And then someone sees me, okay, then I'm going to quick, quick load the, the my, my, my save. But I, I've never done like a save and then loaded after I made like a big quest decision, right? Because I felt like, I, I, I think you should live with those mistakes to find out yeah. what's, what happens then, right? Yeah, I, I agree. And that's also... It also gives you the more interesting options, right? Like it, it adds yeah. some weight to the story instead of being like, oops, I made the wrong decision. Better go back and save. It's, it's robbing yeah. your, your, your own experience. I feel yeah. there's people that don't really care about that and that's totally fine. But for me, like if I make a decision and someone ends up dying or something happens, it's like, fuck, I shouldn't make that decision, but we're here now. Like, how do we go forward? No. I think that's that's also what makes role playing games so interesting, right? Like if there's actual weight to the decisions that you make. 
Yeah. Hundred um, percent. I mean, and, and that's that. That also makes me then excited to play it again and maybe make a different decision. Yeah, exactly. Because I was just about to say, like, I'm wondering how big of an impact you actually have with your decisions, because yes. from what I've heard from uh, some other YouTubers, like, I'm trying to like avoid like a lot of stuff when it comes to cyberpunk. But I was listening to uh, one like non-spoiler heavy talk about just a cyberpunk and what kind of game it is mm. and uh, uh he mentioned that you might think that there's a lot of weight to your decisions but he he thinks that there's not too much weight to it like if you if you actually start playing it back then you, you might say something different but it might have like the same end result so that's yeah that's kind of what i'm what i'm thinking that might happen and i might be a little bit disappointed but then we talk about um what's that guy woodman yeah like you you talked to him and you left the building and i fucking killed that guy like and i killed i killed everyone in clouds by the way <laughs> jesus yeah no i had all good i had me. to i had to fight my way out and then it is kind of weird if you make that decision right because then now i'm at a point where mox is doing a takeover of clouds but you and already it's killed like, everyone. It's like, uh, look, guys, uh, everyone's dead already. Like, what are we talking about? Like, the only person that I left alive is like the receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> right. The rest of it is all dead. And I was like, okay, yeah, go take, go take over like an empty club. <laughs> but that's also the tricky part, right? Like, imagine developing a game like that and just like trying to account like for all the narrative ends, like. Oof. I don't know, man. Yeah. That's that's also like the, the next point, right? Like this is the thing that I've been thinking about a lot when playing this game. It's like uh I know we, we don't have to go too deep into it, like the like the, the crunch aspect to it. But mm. the thing I keep thinking of is like just pressure creating diamonds. And like there's there's obviously no denying that the game is buggy as hell. It doesn't run on like previous gen at all. Like it's it's not even fair to call it a game on previous gen anyway. But we talked about that before. Uh like in the beginning. But it is a fucking good game, man. Like it's like you said, like that that feeling of like booting up a game and then just looking at the clock and being like, oh shit, uh I better get some sleep before the sun rises. Like that kind of moment. That's been that's been a long time for me. Like they yeah. set up like a really good world where if you're in it, like it's really in my opinion, it's really hard to let go. Yeah, yeah. There's always some other stuff to do and it always feels pretty great. But yeah, it's so man, crunch is such a it's such a hard thing. It's a, it's so I mean, I, I think I talked about it before that I kind of felt bad enjoying Red Dead Redemption 2 just because of yeah. all the stuff you heard, right? And that's the thing, because I, I know that these games are great and I want to play them and I know how they were developed and I feel bad about that. But in the end, like, should I not play the game? I don't know, because I, I think they would want me to play the game. If I crunched for a game, I would want as many people as possible to play the game. Yeah, but exactly. I don't want uh, but but then if you know cyberpunk's really really uh successful then that might feel like an encouragement to keep going with that kind of production you know and keep crunching which yeah man I'm so happy that I don't have to crunch and I don't wish that on anyone because yeah it's it's not it's not fun <laughs> yeah man. so so this is like I've never been through crunch, right? So I, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about when it actually comes to like working through crunch. But then, the thing that I keep wondering is that when you look at the games that are like top of the list and like the most anticipated games, I don't know if we discussed it before, but most of those studios like have a history of crunch or like they have something to do with that. So and that's the thing that make, that 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 is one of the things that that makes me then again scared because it it feels like it might be encouraging them to keep going that way, right? Like yeah, I, I, yeah. Like what is what are like the biggest studios that are not like that are 
like for example ea is a big studio but they're kind of you know they're kind of hated i guess by a lot of people for their business practices i mean so is ubisoft i guess for some people um, yeah yeah i was just about to say <laughs> yeah but um but then yeah there's like there's there's big studios like naughty dog uh rockstar city project red i guess that that make games very far apart you know they don't make a game every year but uh it's it's then a groundbreaking game right like red dead redemption 2 was a groundbreaking game but yeah. it's, it's yeah it was because they put everything on the line yeah right and with like bigger studios like ea ubisoft um and all those other companies like they usually have like they other stuff safe. going on yeah and this is this is where I wanted to go, right? Like, apart from, like, all the crunch, like, if we if we just, um, I wouldn't say ignore, but not look at that factor, because it is one factor from, like, the whole aspect, right? Like, if you're working as a game developer, like, in the games industry, like, where do you want to be? Like, what do you want to work on? Yeah. And this is, this is what I, what I keep asking myself. Like, I, I do want to be part of, like, these groundbreaking games. But then what kind of sacrifices am I willing to make? Yeah. Because I don't know. This is the thing. Like I've never been to Crunch. But then I also don't know what it what it actually means. Like working inside of a studio that is reported on for having like uh, really intense Crunch, right? Because we're, mm. we're talking about like, what is it like? Reportedly months and months of, uh, of Crunch on cyberpunk yeah yeah so this is where like purely from like an egotistical artistic perspective i'm just like look i want to work on like the groundbreaking stuff because that's that's what i'm really passionate about but then is it worth making the sacrifice no i mean to be honest i i'd rather um <laughs> i can't it's funnily enough. It's kind of the question that Dexter t uh, asks you in the in the car, right? Do you want to be a legend and go out with a bang and not live oh till thirty, <laughs> right? Or do you want to just yeah. be be a little little guy somewhere in the city? And that's, to be honest, I don't need, I don't, uh, I don't need to work on a cyberpunk or or Red Dead Redemption two. I yeah, I, I mean, and, and it's not like that's the thing, right? It's not like. Uh, not working on Red Dead Redemption 2 means you're gonna work on some game you hate. I fucking love Far Cry and, you know... Oh, yeah, 100%. On. So that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. So it, it, it might not be... I mean... I've, I've, like... It, 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 it's, not, it's not like a game that, yeah, like Red Dead Redemption 2 was anticipated for years, took 10 years of development and breaks every expectation for what's possible technically and in, in in terms of you know like open world interactiveness and whatever mm -hmm. but i'm you know i'm gonna be making art assets either way does it really matter if i'm making uh you know uh a, 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 let's let's just say a tree for red redemption 2 or if i make a tree for I don't know, like even even stuff like uh, games that maybe didn't do so well, like uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands or something. No, not Wildlands. What was the other one? Breakpoint. Breakpoint. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, <clears throat> sure, it's nicer if more people see see your your tree, <laughs> but in the <laughs> end, you did the same thing. And I mean, you know, as long as you're like artistically fulfilled, which I am, I don't need to work on the craziest game ever because I know. At least I've got some ti free time, you know. I'm, I'm not yeah. at the studio for 14 hours. Like I'll take that any day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think this is definitely more like a personal issue that I'm running into, right? Because mm. it, it comes down to what you just said, like the the artistic fulfillment. And I think that's what I've been trying to figure out, like over the years. And this is not this is not to give like any any sleight of hand to Ubisoft. Like the stuff that they're doing is great. It's just for me personally, I think I keep flip-flopping like too much. Mm. Like I keep, and I think a lot of people have that same issue where it's like, um, how would I explain it? Like you're working on something, but then you're always looking forward to the next thing. But if you do that next thing, you're always looking back to like the thing you did before. 
Like, I think, I think that's one issue that I have is that I love to do like a lot of stuff, like a lot of variation. Of course, yeah. And uh, and the grass is always greener on the other side, right? Yeah, even though it, it isn't really, it's just a different shade of green. Like, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think that's what we brought up in like the. Yeah, but that's episode, what it, right? that's what it feels like, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's there's like some some part of me where there must be like still a belief that the grass is greener, even though I have experienced that the grass is not greener. It's just yeah. different. And I think, but it, yeah, that's the thing though. Like if you work, if you work in like a production and say they crunch for like, I don't know, 10, 12 hours a day, mm. like a lot of the stuff that I'm doing on the side, which is giving me like a lot of fulfillment that I might not have at work, wouldn't be possible. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. I mean, that's exactly the thing. Also, that there is, I mean, there is a certain, you know, like, okay, maybe if I work one extra hour a day and I get to work on my favorite game of the world, okay, sure. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, work 100 hour weeks for six months and be half dead when I'm, when I'm done and then be like, oh, but at least I've got this in my portfolio. Like, I, yeah, and that, it's it's kind of what we were talking about. It's 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 like that the the eighty twenty rule, right? Like, <laughs> like I can work on a game that's eighty or even like ninety percent awesome, you know, and then I guess I could. I mean, it's 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 so abstract what we're talking about. It doesn't really make sense, <laughs> but I think you know what I'm saying, right? Like, like 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 we said, like the games we work on are fucking awesome, and maybe they're not. Um, what, what would you call it? Like revolutionary, or something like that. I mean, I guess that's the biggest yeah, like groundbreaking problem that yeah, I guess that's the biggest problem that people might have with Ubisoft is that you know, I guess they 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 don't break the rules, I guess, or they yeah, they they, yeah. they follow like a formula. I guess yeah, and um, but they're still awesome game. I I like I like the games. I like working on them, and yeah, I fucking I don't have to. I, I like I'm able to sleep. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i'm able to yep. sleep and <laughs> I, I couldn't i couldn't play cyberpunk if i if i worked on it maybe i don't know because i wouldn't have time to well that is also the the other topic right like if uh, what what are you actually doing it for like in the end for bragging rights just to say that you worked on a game yeah. like there's there's like a lot of stuff that i'm thinking about right like in the back of my head it's just like like if if i were to like hypothetically if i were to make that step then what would the end result of that be like at the end like the end result is still the same it's like you said like you make a tree for this game or you make a tree for this game like it's still going to be a tree in the end uh but yeah i think it's uh it's really interesting that like a game like this just put me to to think about that stuff because yeah. there's also like the big topic of like seeing the end result and like appreciating the end result for what it is but then if you were to work on the game yourself like you said i probably wouldn't be playing cyberpunk right now hmm. yeah anyway <laughs> i do want to i do have one question though like if you going back to cyberpunk itself right because we we don't want to end it on like a uh, a solemn note like that um what were some of the weirdest things that you have encountered like it could be like bugs or like weird stories or or anything like that um i would say i mean there is definitely a lot of bugs um i think we might just put in some screenshots here and there are some bugs um uh, 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 while we're talking about them um there was a lot of you know just uh, floating stuff a lot of items uh that people had in their hands would just float <laughs> i think <laughs> People I don't know smoking why. cigarettes and then just yeah. when they put them out, it's like people well, people it's on the floating. phone, <laughs> people on the phone, people smoking, people doing whatever. All this stuff as always. Yep. Yeah. Um, let me just. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna look at some of the screenshots because I took some screenshots of those bugs. For that. oh, I didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just like most. Them. Well, to be honest, like the the most janky stuff that I keep encountering is just like police spawning. Have you been invited oh. to the police? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Oh, what the hell is have, happening there, man? Dude, I have a great screenshot, and it's it's hilarious. It's um, it's literally the all the palm trees are um, 
they're like bending in the wind but there so there's some kind of um like deform uh, vertex deformation no, no, not vertex but what is it called um maybe you can call me I'm, I'm not, I'm, uh, I can't think of it right now I'm going to send you the screenshot and the wind is let's just say it's it's like a some kind of tornado going on oh what the hell is happening there yeah what is that <laughs> what is that called it's not called um what is it called in unreal that that offset that you can give stuff to make wind it's not called uh, is it just world position offset or whatever what is it called yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's yeah. A, that's what I'm talking about so <laughs> Oh my it's, god, man! I mean, look at that. It's it's all over the place. It's so funny. And then, <laughs> so that was that was that was hilarious. It only happened once, though. Um, oh yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff where like people walk. Uh, like I don't know, Pan Am was trying to get on a bike, and then she just sits in the ground for a second until she <laughs> teleports onto the thing. Yeah. Uh, one time, I had um, I had saved while I was in a car with Pan Am while she was driving. And mm -hmm. I quit, and I loaded up the game again after you know the next day, and um, I was sitting in the driver's seat, and she was as well, and I could see you know her eyeballs and all the stuff. Oh, nice. Stuff. Yeah, because I guess if it <laughs> if you if you save you know if you save while you're in a car, it always thinks you're at the driver's seat. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. You know, a lot of clipping issues. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I was um I was crawling through like a, a pipe yesterday when I rescued Saul when he was captured uh -huh. by uh the race, right? Yeah. And I noticed something like when you're crawling through that pipe and he's following you, the dot on the UI, like on the menu, moves. Like on the on the minimap I mean. Like uh -huh. it moves. But if you look back, he spawns in place. Like he's not actually following you, like. And if you move back and you're looking at him, he doesn't move. <laughs> wow. So it's like what what they're doing. Oh, what they're doing is just like, um, they're probably like moving the dot on the minimap, and then they just have Pulling like, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what 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 else? There was one big thing that happened. Um. There was oh a couple times I was um, weirdly like teleported almost. Um, I in that mission actually with the Saul uh, rescuing Saul thing, I jumped down a rock and then suddenly I was teleported like twenty meters. <laughs> yeah, I I've noticed some people have that bug too. Or like when when I dodge. I dodge in a certain direction and I'm guessing that it hits like a, a collision at like a weird angle and like fucking propels you like <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh also janky. don't don't try uh, going up a ladder when uh, an NPC is already on the ladder because then you're gonna um, you're gonna go uh -oh. up but like away from the ladder like trying to go around them and then you just teleport back onto the ladder below them <laughs> it's it's yeah <laughs> But this, uh, fuck, what, this is this is the thing, right? Like, so so much detail, like, and it's becoming more and more intricate. Like, if we're talking about just yeah. game development in general, right? Like, the amount of stuff that goes into games. Like, I can imagine working on games like that, where it's just like, look, I'm working on like a ton of other stuff. Like, I don't have time to worry about like you. A thousand edge Jiras. Yeah, like an, yeah. an edge case where you're going to be climbing on the ladder and like an NPC is on it. Like how many people are going to do that really? But then there's yeah. obviously there's people that do it, right? Of course. Yeah, and then I there's, think, I think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, I think that uh, the most annoying part, because we, we talked about the Woodman fight, right? That was like an annoying part. The other annoying part was when I was doing the quest for Delamain. Have you done those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty good, right? Like they're that funny. is a that is a fun side quest. But there is like, it? um, no. So I need to return to him now because like he's it's in the second stage of corruption, right? Oh my god, yes, it's the best. It's the best. So that's uh, that's one of one of the things that I need to do. But uh, there is this car that's patrolling for like a little bit of context. You're basically trying to retrieve uh, taxi vehicles. For like a taxi service, but they're taken over by like, um, well, like split personalities of his yeah. AI, and there's this this one that tries to trap you in, in like Pacifica, and yes. he basically like 
six or like a bunch of people on you to kill you. That fight was maybe the hardest one I had. Fuck that was me, so man. hard. And I don't that know why. I have ridiculous. No <laughs> because the thing that I would do, like the first couple of times, I was like, okay, I'm going to run. I'm going to look for a place where I can properly take cover. And then yep. maybe chuck some nades at them or something. Yep. So I did that. I actually killed a civilian. Then I got like a bunch of cops spawning around me. And then like the cops would aggravate like bunches of other people that were standing around. So at some point I was like fighting 20 people with yep. cops and drones f spawning around me and i was like what the hell is happening here and like i was i couldn't even fight like i was just chucking med packs because i was getting hit so often and then i just died yeah. that, that fight was for some reason incredibly hard yeah um oh, man. just look at that screenshot how beautiful is that hey i love that screenshot that oh said. god yeah that's so, that's nice. so good yeah, it, it does look amazing in some I mean, it does look amazing most of the time, to be honest. But then there's, I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna, I have some screenshots of this. I'm just gonna um, put them in the video later on of little yep. visual bugs. I mean, there's also some stuff of just like, you know, where you can see where they just clip two buildings into each other to make it into a, like a new building, right? And yeah, it's, yeah. It's just like, I'm, 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 to be honest, that's, that's not fair, like, to complain about that because in the end, it's an open world game with a huge world. Okay. There might be a clipping issue with that one little prop but there's definitely some stuff with the ai behavior that kind of can take you out of the game like people standing on top of couches and stuff um, yeah 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 uh, I, also i, I really think... hated this dirt look at this dirt blending in like a pacific uh parking lot this this might be because of my low settings um but man that that looks horrible oh it never looked that bad for me though yeah probably because i have i, I, I said a lot of stuff to uh too low so i can run it at 60 70 fps oh okay yeah 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 but yeah man the worst... i think i think that's that's like a that's the thing that i that i just constantly feel with this game it's just like so impressive like there's like the the screenshots that we're showing here right like some of them like for some of the bugs it's obviously like yeah that's that shouldn't be happening, but like I mean, for a game like this, is like you said, it's an open world game. Yeah. But like I've I've been taking like a bunch of screenshots where I'm just like, just standing in awe and just looking at how they did like the, the volumetrics and like the spacing of like the atmospherics and it's just like, yeah. oh, so good, man, so good. Definitely. I mean, there is so much cool stuff to, to explore, and I I really do like the world. Yeah. Um, Here's my here's my dude by the way, that's how I look now with the. <laughs> I got different glasses now though. Oh, the little, what is that hat called? A uh, flat cap. Oh okay yeah yeah. Yeah, but stuff like usually I, that's that's a little bit of an older screenshot. I have a little bit cooler clothes now, but I've still got the yep. trench coat and the hat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, probably the worst bug that I had that really took me out of it was um when i uh there was some person i had to kill for for a mission for like a little gig it was just a quick side mission walked up to her in her um, motel room talked to her was like hey you know gotta kill you or you gotta run away or something like that and then she's like ah fuck you she just starts shooting at you i shot back at her and in the middle of us having a fight she just went back to where she had spawned like she was huh. leaning on a window looking outside of the window so in the middle of the fight she just went back to that window and started looking outside the window and i could yeah. just shoot her while she was standing there and that that really like took me out of it more than you know like a little floating cell phone or a floating cigarette um yeah but yeah, yeah. yeah i haven't had any game breaking things happening yeah, there's um when when talking about like AI, this is probably like the last thing we're gonna talk about because we've been going for like two hours. It's crazy. This is, uh, yeah, this is good stuff, man. Like we've, I've been totally enjoying the game. There was um yeah. this fight with Sasquatch. Do you remember that mm -hmm. one? Yeah. What did you do there? Uh, I hacked her and then I killed her. Um, okay. Because I, I snuck cause... around and I was like, I'm not fighting this. <laughs> oh, did you not fight her at all? No, I just avoided. Oh, I felt her. like a. Oh, interesting. I felt like I had to actually, and then I, I, I was because I was sneaking around the rest of the the gym, mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, but for her, I was like, I'm, 
like I'm gonna kill her. I guess I think maybe you know I was like thinking of maybe I can get like a legendary weapon from her or something. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, but then I I started hacking her. Then I just shot her a bunch of times. Well, the the quest says deal with Sasquatch, right? And right I was on, like, yeah. hmm, okay. What if I deal with it in my way? And there's like screens embedded in the floor, uh -huh. so I just snuck around, like lifted the screen up, snuck around a little bit more, like using those screens as cover. That, oh, that you wouldn't cool. see me and I would just sneak around and then that's it. Very interesting. Like it was pretty interesting that you could do that because I was expecting the game to just say like nope at some point like her smashing through one of the screens and just grabbing you and then the fight starts something like that right? Yeah. But it didn't happen. I was like that's, okay that's pretty that's interesting nice. that you can do this. Yeah. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I mean that's that's the thing. It's um I, I guess I felt because it said deal with Sasquatch, I felt like I had to kill her. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's interesting that you to know that you you don't have to. It would be cool if then she returns at a later quest or something, you know, and she tries to seek revenge because you killed all her people mm -hmm. or whatever. Or you did this and that. All right. Should we, <laughs> should we end with that screenshot? <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's a great note to end it on. That's hilarious. I haven't found that yet. That's great. <laughs> All right, man. This was such a good episode. Like, I'm yeah. I'm thoroughly enjoying the game. Like, I can't. This is probably the first game where I'm actually excited to do like a second playthrough of it. Yeah, me too, man. It's it's. I always think I'm gonna do it, and I never do it. And I think on this one, I might actually do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It's so good. Yeah. All right, man. Um, it was good. Good chatting about this. It was a good. But yeah, and uh, yeah. Thank you all for listening too. Like I hope you enjoyed this little chat and uh I hope you're like if you if you have like a strong PC or if you're on like the next gen consoles already, like I I mean we're both probably gonna highly recommend this game. Yeah. Just uh just take in like all the all the splendor what what Night City has to offer. It's a really good yeah. game. I guess if you if you can, if you're you know, if you're not too excited for it, I guess you can wait until maybe some of the stuff's fixed, but if you're not if you're not super like nitpicky about stuff then you're probably gonna be fine like you're mm -hmm. not gonna no, it's, it's not an unplayable game of, to any means it's just you know it's sometimes it, it it's a little bit annoying stuff that happens but the yeah, the, yeah. the foundation of the game the stuff that i was expecting from it that's that's really i think the, the most important part i came in with the right expectations the stuff that i thought was going to be good is good and that's what counts for me it's the, the the an interesting world and um, an intriguing story or yeah. a lot of intriguing stories rather which is the nice part yeah 100 percent. like the side stories with pan am and, and judy like they're they're really good like i've been enjoying yeah. them and even like i said even those ones that aren't from like the main or characters like yeah, like you know like uh the, the, the thing with the paralysis like i really like that one you mm -hmm. have to tell me what you think <laughs> yeah we'll do man all right thanks everyone for listening to this episode um and yeah. just go enjoy the game for yourself yeah man oh not man but yeah everyone and also People. you man <laughs> thanks everyone for listening catch you in the next one <laughs> bye bye see ya We hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you're an environment artist trying to break into the industry or just looking to grow your skills, you can find a ton more resources like weekly tips, blog posts and more on beyondextend.com. But that's going to do it from our side. Thanks so much for joining us and a shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who made this possible.